From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. They came under the cover of darkness on a warm spring night in 2008. A deadly force moving in near total silence. By sunrise here in a remote village in the Central African Republic, or the CAR, nearly 100 people, mostly children, were gone, kidnapped. I suddenly woke up when I heard the sound of people being beaten. I woke up and fell directly into the hands of the Tongo Tongo. Tongo Tongo, the local name for the Lord's Resistance Army, or the LRA a Ugandan rebel group notorious for its use of child soldiers and sex slaves. They were here to replenish their forces and they took 22-year-old Octavio. He miraculously escaped a month later. They had a plan to train us as soldiers. I'm back, but now I can't sleep. I'm always afraid. I often ask myself why an armed group would come into CAR, and the only good answer I've come up with is, why not? There's no one there to stop it. Toby Lanza, former UN humanitarian coordinator in the CAR, says it's a country simply too poor to protect itself. Fewer than 5,000 soldiers and a few hundred police officers guard a country larger than France. And so, he sent this group from the UN. Their mission, to provide humanitarian support and to gather evidence about exactly what happened to the victims. On board is Roger Diu, a child protection officer. We have a jungle survival kit in the north. <laughs> the event we have to go down until the search and rescue party will arrive. Meanwhile, nearly a thousand kilometers away, on a makeshift grass airstrip in Octavio's village, a crowd anxiously awaits. They see the plane in the distance. <laughs> Much needed humanitarian supplies are unloaded. HIV tests, rape kits and medical supplies. For Roger, the work begins immediately, interviewing survivors like Octavio. The primary need is psychological support because they, they, they went through some very traumatizing experiences. So they, they need to talk to people. And the team is determined to talk to as many victims as possible and set out to find them. It's a drive through dense jungle. Scenes like this are repeated again and again. Along the way, they stop, collecting information, gathering the stories, and making a list of the disappeared, a list that one day may reunite families. I've seen uh, tracing uh, separations that lasted for 10 years, but we were able to do the, the family reunification. There is always hope, always hope. Hope that four-year-old Annie Botti is holding on to. His sister is on that list. They were sleeping side by side that night. Suddenly he was beaten by one of Tongo Tongo. And they, he came out running. They used gun to, to hit. But I did. It was here. Roger and Alexi hear many of these stories and try to provide an outlet for children like Anibotti to open up. But there's even more that's needed. Like life-saving medicine, crucial since the LRA soldiers ransacked one of the few health clinics that did exist in the area. Here, the team delivers aid. As for the future, Roger believes they lay an important foundation. But long-term psychological counseling must be continued through local organizations. Something Octavio longs for. His mind is ravaged by the memories of his ordeal and by fear for those still in the grasp of the LRA. I may be back home, but 
I can never stop thinking about those left behind. I and the world need to know if the people the LRA abducted will ever return. This report was produced by Andy Gittal for the United Nations.